Live from Seahawks Stadium at Anacortes High School in Anacortes, Washington, this is Seahawks Football on AHS Live. Welcome in, ladies and gentlemen, to AHS Live for this 2018 homecoming broadcast between the Cedar Crest Red Wolves and your Anacortes Seahawks. Uh, Red Wolves come in at 2-2 two and two overall. Uh, Seahawks uh, at 0-4, and, four. and uh, so, but should be a good matchup. This is a conference game in the new alignment uh, within the uh, Northwest Conference, and uh, uh, so this game has definitely has some added value, other than being the homecoming game for the Seahawks. Is uh, there's three 1-0 and o teams, three 0-1 and one teams, so everybody's still in the uh, uh, hunt, obviously, to uh, win their division within the conference. So. Uh, the Seahawks and the Red Wolves both play in the Lake Division. They both sit at 0-1, so it will be uh, uh, very important for the Seahawks here if they could get a victory to uh, continue uh, keeping uh, some playoff hopes alive. And uh, with it being homecoming night, different energy uh, for sure out here at uh, Seahawks Stadium. And uh, uh, fortunately, the weather is held up. It's a little windy, but it's still nice and sunny getting ready to... Uh, uh, see a beautiful sunset here. Uh, they are getting ready down on the field uh, to uh, uh, do the national anthem, so we will cut to that and uh, hear the performance by the AHS band led by Chris Deal. High School Seahawks band. Uh, I did pronounce the uh, uh, band teacher's name wrong. It is Chris Dial. I apologize, Mr. Dial. But once again, uh, excellent performance uh, pre-game here for the uh, Seahawks band. So as you can see on the video, there are quite a large student section tonight. And uh, I'm sure they're going to be making a lot of noise. Got the cheerleaders, the band, everything in full force here tonight. So we're looking forward uh, to... Uh, to this game here. So um, just wanted to, uh, before we get going into the game, I wanted to send a big thank you out to the AHS Broadcast Club, also led by uh, Jim Thompson. There's been a few hoops that have had to have been jumped through with all the construction going on here at the high school, and uh, they've still found a way in order to make this happen, uh, which is uh, awesome. This is a good opportunity for people to catch up on the game still. Uh, even though it can't be streamed live, at least they can catch up on the game uh, in case they were out of town or live elsewhere, things of that nature. So thank you guys for that. And uh, Piers, uh, uh, as Cedar Crest uh, steps onto the field now, Seahawks are lined up to receive the kickoff. It looks like it will be uh, Trevor Beaner and uh, Joseph Cutter will be the deep backs uh, in order to uh, uh, get the game started here. So. 
Hopefully uh, Seahawks, once they uh, get this kickoff return, can get a nice uh, long drive to get the game going, eat up some clock. Their offense is definitely uh, made to uh, eat up clock and, and keep the game low scoring and uh, keep it competitive. Last week uh, they were up 8-6 to six at halftime against Mount Lake Terrace. They, uh, did it, it did end up eventually resulting in a loss, but uh, according to Coach Hunter, definitely uh, uh, their, one of their better performances this year. So uh, hopefully they can now carry that into this week and continue to make the progress that they're, uh, they've been making this year in, in uh, uh, getting the program on track with a new coach and a lot of players that had graduated last year. So you got a lot of guys that are playing either for the first time this year or just getting more playing time than they have in years past due to the large group of seniors that left. So, so as... Uh, Cedar Crest lines up for the kickoff. That's Nathan Gertie. He kicks it deep. It's going towards Trevor Beaner. He's going to pick it up at about the 12-yard line. He cuts right out back into the middle, and he is going to be tackled and down at the 20-yard line is where they're going to spot it. So the Seahawks will have their opening drive starting on their own 20-yard line. And uh, usually the Seahawks this year have been lining up in the uh, wing T offense. Uh, I'm sure that's how they'll come out again. And uh, Gage Burrow, uh, sophomore quarterback, one of, I believe, uh, five starters that are starting uh, for the Seahawks uh, that are sophomores. And that, that's, uh, that's uh, welcome to varsity football there. So, so as uh, Gage Burrow brings the team to the line, we got Eamon Gilden uh, behind him, Trevor Beaner, and Pearson Nordmark at the wingbacks as they pitch to Beaner. He cuts up middle and he's gonna get about a one yard gain. So that'll make it second and nine for the Seahawks. And uh, yeah, they did give him one yard. So it will be second and nine as they line right back up here. Shot, uh, pistol formation, uh, low snap in the dirt. And Gage Burrow, smart thing, just dives on the ball and protects it. He will be down though at the 11 yard line. So that's gonna make it about third and, uh, oh goodness, about third and 19 here. So once again, Beaner right next to Burrow in the back. They, they actually snap it to Beaner. It's a low snap, but unfortunately it's on the ground and Cedar Crest recovers it at about the six yard line recovered by Frederick Reed. So not the start the Seahawks were looking for, obviously, uh, but uh, let's see what they can do here. This is a tough position to put yourself on. Uh, uh, on your first defensive possession, having the uh, opposing team only six yards out. But let's see if the Seahawks can uh, hold them to at least a, a field goal opportunity here as uh, Jared Wright leaves the field. Cedar Crest runs it up the middle, and he is stuffed by both, oh my goodness, who is that? Trevor Beaner and Eamon Gilden, I do believe. I was reading uh, earlier this week, Cedar Crest, they're gonna run some of the same wing tee that uh, Anacortes runs, but they also like to run a spread formation. So Coach Hunter says they have prepared for both, and certainly on that first down play, looks like they did. As it's a uh, uh, one yard gain, it's now second goal from the five yard line. Quarterback Gavin McDermott, a senior quarterback, gets the ball and he sneaks it up the middle, and he's gonna get down to about the two yard line. So it'll be third and goal from the two. Cedar Crest, I assume, trying to keep it fairly simple here since they only had six yards to go. Seahawks doing a good job, though, of not letting them really break a play here, only allowing four yards uh, in, in these two plays. So now here comes a big one. It's four down territory. They're going to certainly uh, go for it on fourth, I'm sure, if we get a stop here. But let's see if the Seahawks can get a stop and force them to have to try and score on fourth down as they go to their spread formation here, Cedar Crest does. McDermott gets a snap. He looks right, throws it out to the... Uh, uh, running back, that was, uh, or tight end, sorry, that was, uh, or running back, Frederick Reed. That pass is incomplete, so that's going to be fourth and goal for Cedar Crest. 9.56 left here in the first quarter. Ball's on the two-yard line. So let's see if uh, Cedar Crest elects to go for it. I would assume they would. Most teams do, but they may set up for a field goal also, so we shall see. Uh, Gavin McDermott is on the field. It appears he is, uh, they are planning to go for it here. They're not lining up the kicker. So 
fourth and goal from the two. Let's see if the Seahawks can get a huge stop here, although they'd have to start deep in their own territory. At least they wouldn't give up a score after the turnover. Here's a snap. He looks left. It's a slant pattern. The ball bounces off the receiver. Great defense over there by uh, Joseph Cutter. Ball goes up in the air, and it falls to the ground. So the Seahawks, even though Cedar Crest only had six yards to go uh, on their first possession, the Seahawks get them stopped. And they will now take over at their own two-yard line with 9.51 left here in the first quarter. So a couple low snaps on the last possession for the Seahawks. I'm sure they'll get that worked out and see if they can uh, put together a nice long drive here. It's a good way to uh, uh, really get, get things going if you can get a long drive going from deep in your own territory. Cedarcrest shows a blitz. It's a handoff. It looks like it was to the up back. I believe that was Eamon Gilden. I'm trying to get a look here. It was. They spotted three, so it's a one-yard gain. That's going to make it second and nine uh, for the Seahawks. As uh, Gage Burrow gets information from Coach Hunter over there on the sidelines and takes it back to the huddle here. Looks like Cedar Crest is lined up in a four. Well, they kind of bunch things up knowing the Seahawks' defense, but typically it would be uh, similar to a 4-3, uh, they now put a fifth guy up on the line, and they're, they're looking to take away middle. They're, they're looking to blitz once again. And we got a nice run here. It's going to gain about, where are they spot it? The seven-yard line. So it's going to be about a four-yard gain. That was uh, Trevor Beaner on the carry once again. So that's going to make it thir or, yeah, third and five for the Seahawks uh, with the ball on their own seven-yard line. Uh, for those of you joining us late, you missed a heck of a uh, series for the Seahawks defensively. Cedar Crest started on the Seahawks' six-yard line and was not able to get it in the end zone thanks to the Seahawks uh, uh, playing really good defense to get started here as uh, Burrow lines up under center. Up back is Gildon. He fakes to him and hands it to Beaner. Sweep right. He cuts back up. That's going to be a first down for the Seahawks as Beaner just carries three guys with him. They're going to spot that at the... 18 and a half, 19 yard line. So it'll be first and 10 for the Seahawks there. That was a heck of a play uh, by not only the uh, blockers, but Trevor Beaner, nice cutback. And then would have been a first down either way. But once he got to the first down marker, three guys got on him and he just carried him a few more yards. Excellent run by Beaner there as Seahawks step back up. Now it's more of a pistol formation here. Um, Eamon Gildon is the up back here, and it looks like they're going to hand it off to Beaner. Nope, oh, they did, sorry. Even Gage Burrow faked me out there. He cuts up the middle, and he's going to get about a four-yard gain. So that will be second and six for your Seahawks. And uh, it appears Coach Hunter, as he's already done a few times this year, is going to give the opposing team a heavy dose of Trevor Beaner. Of course, Trevor and his brother Peyton uh, rushed the ball quite a bit on uh, varsity last year. And uh, so Trevor, one of the more experienced varsity players uh, on this squad. And that's going to be an offsides, I believe, on, uh, on uh, Cedar Crest. We'll see what the referee signals here. But it appeared to me that they uh, got going a little too soon. And, and that will be a five-yard gain for the Seahawks. So that's going to make it uh, second and one. Or, yeah, second and uh, yeah, second and one here for the Seahawks. So uh, uh, you'll take a free five yards any chance you can get here. And uh, good job. Uh, I would imagine Gage Burrow probably did a little, uh, changed his cadence a little bit and was able to draw him offside. So nice job. Pearson, Nordmark, Trevor Beaner once again, the wing backs. Eamon Gilden, the up back. Pistol formation. Burrow calls for the snap. He's dropping back to pass. He gets nailed as he passes it. But uh, he is able to get rid of it, and it's incomplete. That was uh, Shad Mills, uh, linebacker for Cedar Crest, that uh, went untouched uh, to Gage Burrow. So Seahawks tried a little something different. Only one yard to go. Now they're third and one. I kind of like that call, actually, uh, kind of catch them off guard. They're probably expecting you to run with one yard to go, see if you can get a, a quick little pass play in and get some free yardage. But did not work out. 7-19 left here in the first quarter as the Seahawks approach the line. Ball is at the 28-yard line, need to get to the 29 for the first down. Third and one. Once again, Burrow, pistol formation calls. They go actually right straight to Trevor Beaner, direct snap to Trevor Beaner, and he runs right up the middle. What a great job by the line, big push. 
And they're going to spot that at the 33-yard line. So that was a five-yard gain on third and one for the Seahawks. So it will now be first and 10 from their own 33-yard line. 7-13 and counting on the game clock here in the first quarter at Seahawks Stadium. Seahawks come up to the line once again. Pretty much same formation. They're going to put uh, Beaner right next to Burrow. Let's see who the snap goes to this time. It goes directly to Beaner again, but he hands it off to Pearson Nordmark on a reverse. But unfortunately, uh, Cedarcrest sniffed it out, and that's going to take the Seahawks back to the 29-yard line. So that's going to make it second and, uh, or excuse me, third and 14, or third and 13, I believe. Let's see here. Yeah, third and 13, or 14. Third and 14, I'll get it straight here. Or second and 14, that was first down, I apologize. So Seahawks, once again, um, uh, tried something a little different there. Didn't quite work out, but it's, it's good to have it in the bag because uh, you could always use it later and it may work out as we're back to the standard wing tee. They hand it off to Beaner. He runs right, cuts back up the middle. He's hit right about the line of scrimmage. And with the spot they're going to give him, it's going to be about a one-yard gain. So that will make it third and 13. So a little different situation for the Seahawks this time versus last time on third down. Last time it was only third and one. And now it's third and 13. So usually that means you're going to be passing the ball. But we shall see um, uh, what Coach Hunter uh, chooses to have uh, Gage Burrow and his teammates do here uh, on this third down. So Cedar Crest hung tough the last few plays here. We'll see if the Seahawks can break one off and get a first down here. And they are in their wing formation. They fake to Beaner, hand off. They're looking for a screen pass to Beaner. Runs into his own guy and he gets back up field, but unfortunately he's just going to get back. Uh, they're going to actually give him a one yard uh, loss based on the on the spot. So it will be fourth and 14 uh, for the Seahawks. So I imagine we're going to see a punt here. Uh, and usually that is uh, Matthew Hendricks. I'm trying to look and see who's back there to punt. It appears that it's Pearson Nordmark uh, back to punt at this time. And uh, Nordmark gets off a booming kick. It lands at about the 36. And it just keeps rolling. Nice Seahawks bounce. And it's going to be downed at the Cedar Crest 20. That was down by... Uh, number two, uh, Joseph Cutter. So nice punt by Pearson Nordmark. That's going to be about a 51-yard, uh, uh, yeah, 51-yard punt for Pearson Nordmark. Gets Cedar Crest back on the opposite end of the field from where they started their last drive. And boy, if the Seahawks can do what they did last defensive series and hold them to pretty much nothing, they're going to put themselves in good field, posi uh, field position. Uh, after Cedar Crest has to punt. We'll see what happens here. So Cedar Crest comes up and they line up in their spread formation once again. And uh, here's the snap. It looks like they've handed off to the running back, uh, number 44. And couldn't quite see who made the tackle. That's on the far side of the field from me. But from where the spot is, it looks like it's about a one yard gain. So it should be second and nine. Uh, for Cedar Crest here. Uh, they tried to run left with uh, their running back, Frederick Reed, um, but uh, Seahawks not allowing much of anything, just a one yard gain. So, second and nine. They are lined up once again. Uh, it's a spread type formation under center, though. And we got a handoff, and ooh, I, I saw a hold. I don't see a flag, though, but the Seahawks did a great job. What great pursuit. Just kept pushing them out to the right. Didn't really allow. Uh, the running back to turn up field. That was uh, Tyler Gray was the running back. And uh, Trevor Beaner and a host of other Seahawks out there on the tackle. So uh, that's going to end up going for a loss of uh, one and a half, two yards. So it'll be somewhere in the third and 11. They're marking it at the 19. So yeah, third and 11 now. As the Seahawks so far defensively have really stepped up. Let's see if they can do it once again here on third down as uh, Cedar Crest comes up to the line. True spread formation here. Three wide receivers to the left, one to the right. They're looking downfield, trying to come across the middle. Great, great coverage by Joseph Cutter. Oh, but they're going to – it was an incomplete pass, but I think 
as you'll see on the replay, I think Joseph might have had his hand in his back, in the receiver's back, and that may be why they're having to call the uh, pass interference. We'll see uh, what the official word is here, but based on where the flag was thrown, that's usually going to be what happens. And uh, was not able to hear the referee's signal, but they are walking off the penalty. It's going to be a first down for Cedar Crest. Ball is at the 35-yard line of uh, Cedar Crest, so they will have first and 10 from their own 35, 318 on, left on the clock here in the first quarter. Score is still tied 0-0. At this point, Seahawks have done really well defensively so far. Unfortunately, that penalty, uh, which is kind of iffy, but, you know, I understand why they had to call it, but that uh, gave Cedar Crest their first first down of the game. As they hand off, it's a reverse. Coming back to number eight, he kind of spins right up the middle, and he's going to get about a three-yard gain, so it'll be second and seven. That was uh, Peyton Burpee, himself only a sophomore. Tiny little guy, 5'6", 125, uh, that... Uh, uh, made the run there. So, like I said, should be uh, second and seven. Uh, ball is on the 38-yard line as uh, they come lined up in their formation here. They hand it off right up the middle, but get out of here. That ain't happening. That was uh, Eamon Gildon said, no, 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 you will not run up the middle on this play. So nice job by Eamon. Uh, actually a loss of a yard, so that will make it third and eight for Cedar Crest. So once again, the Seahawks have forced a third down, and the only uh, way that Cedar Crest has been able to convert one so far was on a penalty. So let's see if the Seahawks can hold them here on third down with no penalty and uh, force what would most likely be a punt from this portion of the field. As they look for a pitch going left to Peyton Burpee once again, but Trevor Beaner and then coming in right after him is Oscar Acosta sniffed it out and take him down for a loss. That's going to get marked at the uh, 32, no, 33 yard line. I apologize. So another uh, four yard or five yard loss. So Cedar Crest will definitely come out to punt. Seahawks defense has been outstanding thus far to start this game. So uh, hopefully they can keep that going and the offense will get clicking here. And before you know it, Seahawks will be up. So they're set, set for the punt. We got Peyton Beaner deep along with, they kick it, or I'm sorry, Trevor Beaner along with Caden Cummings. Trevor fumbles the uh, reception of the punt, but it appears uh, he was able to recover it himself. So the Seahawks will be starting on their own 37 uh, to start this uh, uh, third offensive possession of theirs. There's 117 left in the first quarter. And uh, uh, score is still tied 0-0. Zero to zero. So Seahawks have had some fairly decent success running the ball. Uh, just uh, um, uh, got, got uh, a couple losses that, that kind of hurt the last drive. So see if they can uh, make some forward progress once again and keep that going here as uh, Eamon Gildon once again up. Trevor Beaner is dropping back. It's handed off to him by Gage Burrow. He cuts back up the middle, and he gets the ball up to the 41-yard line. So that's going to be a nice four-yard gain on first down. So it's going to make it second and six as the clock continues to run. Just coming up on one minute left here in the first quarter. Gage Burrow looks at his wristband, gives his instructions to his fellow Seahawks. And they come up to the line. He will be directly under center. Eamon Gildon is tailback, Peyton Wiener. Pearson Nordmark, the wingbacks, and oh, it appeared to me there's offsides. It was, so that's a, another free five yards. You know, I know Cedar Crest is antsy, but I have to give some credit, even though I'm not on the field and can hear it. I have to assume that Gage Burrow is helping cause that with the cadence of his snap count, because uh, that is twice already he has drawn the nose guard uh, off sides this game. Uh, and uh, got the Seahawks a free five yards. So they're going to be at third, or excuse me, second and two. Uh, the ball is on their own 45. Burrow under center. They hand it off to Beaner. He runs right, sweeps right. He's looking to get out wide and get upfield. He does, and he's going to go out of bounds, but not, not until after getting the first down. 
And with the spot there, they will now be on the Cedar Crest 48. Oh, wait. Uh, they're moving back here. I apologize. Uh, uh, they're going to be on the Seahawks 47. And, uh, but that is enough for a first down. And that's going to uh, have the... Seahawks first down. Move. We've got 25 seconds. Now it's counting uh, here in the first quarter. Seahawks going to try to get off one more play, it looks like, before the end of the first quarter. First and 10 on their own 47-yard line. See what they do here. They pitch to Beaner. He cuts back up to the middle, and he gets some positive yardage once again. Line got a good push. Peyton made, or Trevor made a nice cut and uh, uh, got up to the 49-yard line. So it'll be second and eight when we return. It's uh, end of the first quarter. Scores tied zero to zero. We're going to take a break for one minute. We'll be back here on AHS Live. Go a few blocks into Old Town Anacortes and you'll find Dad's Diner. With breakfast and lunch served all day, you'll definitely find the perfect meal. All of their food is prepared fresh each day, from the delicious house salad with salmon to the savory BLT. Dad's Diner, open Tuesday through Sunday, is located on commercial between 9th and 10th Street. Come on down and grab a bite. One large hot and ready classic, please. That'll be five bucks. I left my wallet in the car. Four seventy five. Thank you. Everyone's got 20 quarters for a large hot and ready classic. Little Caesars, world's easiest way to pizza. Pizza, pizza. Back here on AHS Live, Dave Wilder here with you as we start the second quarter. Seahawks now heading from south to north on the field at their own 49-yard line. Second and eight, and it's a bobbled snap, unfortunately, but I uh, assume it appears, yes, the Seahawks did recover it. So it will cost them a down, but it does not cost them any yardage, so that will make it uh, third and eight. And I'd be remiss, I, I'm not as professional as uh, Lou D'Amelio, who of course usually does this play-by-play, -play, and I just get to sit and kind of laugh and have fun. But Lou couldn't make it tonight. Lou, I miss you. Hope to uh, be with you on the next one here as the Seahawks now come up with third and eight. Cedar Crest showing blitz. They fake the handoff to Beaner, and Barreau runs left, but unfortunately Cedar Crest did not fall for it. That's going to be a big loss back to their own 40-yard line, so that's going to make it fourth and 17 as uh, I assume the Seahawks will now come out and punt. They will. Pearson Nordmark once again uh, will be back uh, for the punting duties here. Uh, last time he had a 51 yard punt and pinned Cedar Crest down at their 20 but this is a very low, low snap unfortunately and uh, it's just going to be a, a loss of even more yardage as Nordmark tries to get it and run with it, but he had nowhere to go. It's going to be down to the 25-yard uh, line of the Seahawks. So that's where Cedar Crest is going to take over here with 10.52 left in the second quarter. Uh, it'll be first and 10. Uh, this will be the second time they've had a uh, pretty darn good field position here. Seahawks, though, no matter where it's been thus far, have been able to stop Cedar Crest. So let's see if they can continue it defensively, um, getting the job done tonight. As Cedar Crest comes up, they hand off to number 44, the running back. And I see a heck of a lot of guys there. Number 67, Cameron Rice, was in on the tackle, was one of them in on the tackle, as they're going to give him about a, trying to see where they spotted that, 28-yard line, so, or excuse me, 23-yard line. So about a two-yard gain. So it'll be second and eight uh, for Cedar Crest. And uh, Seahawks defense so far has just been suffocating, really. So hopefully uh, this will continue here as they now go back, Cedar Crest does, to their spread formation. And uh, they get the ball snapped. And they look for a pass right across the middle. But uh, number 34, uh, 
Uh, I don't have a 34 on the roster, but uh, whoever that was, they tried to pass it to. Might have been 44 Frederick Reed. It was unfortunately dropped for Cedar Crest. Good for the Seahawks, though, as that forces third down. So third and eight. Once again, uh, Seahawks forcing the issue defensively here, not allowing Cedar Crest to get much accomplished on the offensive end. So they line up in their uh, spread formation. The quarterback under center. He drops back, looks to his left, makes a screen pass, and wide open on the screen passes. Uh, number uh, 20, that is uh, Tyler Gray, and he gets a huge chunk of yardage. They're going to down that at the, uh, oh, goodness, what is that, the one-yard line. So that ends up being a 22-yard gain or so. So it will be first and goal from the one. By far Cedar Crest's biggest offensive play of the game thus far. So Seahawks uh, are going to have to try and make a stand here. Uh, through these next four downs, try and keep them out of the end zone. As Cedar Crest comes up, they go for a quarterback sneak. But, I, oh, he eventually got through. They do now signal a touchdown. I thought maybe they'd stopped it with forward progress, but that is not the case. So that will be a touchdown for the Cedar Crest Red Wolves. That's the first score of the game. It is now six to nothing, uh, Cedar Crest. You'll see on the replay here uh, that uh, – Quarterback went forward but didn't get across the goal line initially. You'll see the stop, the stop right there. And then with the extra push, uh, it, he, he hadn't been stopped long enough for them to uh, stop his forward progress, and he was able to sneak through eventually and get in to the end zone. As their kicker now, which is Nathan Gertie, comes out and kicks the extra point, and it is good. So with that, that makes it 7-0 Cedar Crest over your Seahawks. 9.58 left in the second quarter. Uh, before the kickoff, we're going to take a quick 30-second break here and give me a chance to catch my breath. We'll be right back with you here on AHS Live. Just live as uh, Cedar Crest lines up for the kickoff from their own 40, kicking to the Anacorta Seahawks with Peyton Beaner and Joseph Cutter uh, deep uh, for the kick return. Uh, Cedar Crest just scored their first, well, the first touchdown of the game for anyone, 7-0, 9.58 left here in the second quarter. So Seahawks uh, twice, uh, unfortunately, gave uh, Cedar Crest extremely good field position, and it makes it tough to continue to stop. So they were able to get it the first time. Second time, though, um, not able to do so. They had a big uh, screen pass that uh, they were able to get quite a large gain on and, and eat up the chunk of the 25 yards, almost 25 yards that they needed to uh, uh, get a touchdown, and then they snuck it in from the one. So here we go. Kickoff, and it's going to go deep to Joseph Cutter. He gets it at about the 14-yard line, and he heads back towards the middle. Got, has some blocking, puts his head down, and he gets out to about the 30, 29 and a half, 30-yard line they're going to spot it at. So good starting field position there for the Seahawks as they come back out. And I imagine uh, uh, been mostly running plays, all but two so far. And I imagine you're going to see a lot of the same right now. They've had some success, just haven't been able to string together a full drive. But uh, uh, you continue to run the ball, and you continue to wear down other teams. And then, of course, those runs start getting bigger and bigger, and you're able to continue to uh, – uh, or, or, or able to start putting together longer drives. So here we go. Gage Bro takes and hands it off to Joseph Cutter, and he sprints left, and he cuts back upfield, and he's going to get tackled and brought down at the – trying to see where they spot it, at the 37-yard uh, line. So that will be a seven-yard gain on first down. That's a heck of a way to start a drive. So it's going to be second and three for the Seahawks. Nine and a half minutes and counting left here 
in the second quarter. Seahawks break their huddle. And uh, Cedar Crest, once again, probably assuming run. Uh, but I notice they're keeping one of their DBs a little wider this time, just in case. And I believe Gage Barreau once again. <laughs> this time it wasn't the nose guard, though. He, brought, he uh, got a uh, defensive end to come off the edge a little too soon, get a free five yards. And that's going to be a Seahawks first down as they will move the ball up to the 42-yard line. So the Seahawks will be first and 10 from their own 42. That is the third time tonight that Gage Burrow has drawn Cedar Crest offside. Uh, this is the first one, I believe, or no, second one that has resulted in a first down for the Seahawks as they snap the ball. And I'm trying to, couldn't really tell who they handed it to there. Sorry, a lot of jerseys in the way. See who they pick up off the pile. It's Trevor Beaner got the carry. And they're going to. Uh, keep that as a no gain. So it will be second and 10 for the Seahawks from their own 42-yard line. So Seahawks uh, making some progress here. Had a nice seven-yard run on first down. Got a uh, uh, five-yard uh, uh, penalty against Cedar Crest. No yards there. So now second and 10. And let's see if they can uh, get some positive yardage here and keep this drive moving in the right direction. As Burrow takes a snap, he hands it off, or fakes the handoff, to Beaner, sorry, and gets it to Joseph Cutter, who is able to break a couple tackles, but unfortunately was hit behind the line of scrimmage, but was able to drag him up and get about a one yard gain. So it's gonna make it third and nine for the Seahawks. Eight minutes, five seconds uh, left here in the second quarter. Gage Burrow gets his instructions from the sidelines, brings it into the huddle and here come your Seahawks up to the line of scrimmage on a big third down here. Something they could really use here would be to convert this. Third and nine. And they snap the ball. They pitch it to Trevor Beaner, who's cutting right, sweeping right, excuse me, and tries to cut up, but uh, unfortunately was not able to do so. And with the spot, we'll be back at the original uh, line of scrimmage, as you'll see on the replay here. Cedar Crest uh, read this play really well and uh, was able to uh, uh, keep it to a uh, uh, one yard or a, a one yard loss, excuse me. So nice play by Cedar Crest there. So it'll be fourth down now for the Seahawks as Pearson Nordmark is back to punt once again. He's had a couple good punts. Well, uh, a good punt thus far. Last time the snap was low. This one's a little high, but he's able to get the kick off and he boots it down there and takes a friendly Seahawk bounce once again. So uh, that's gonna be downed on the 23 yard line of Cedar Crest. So that's about a 35 yard punt this time by Pearson Nordmark doing a nice job back there punting as uh, Cedar Crest will now step onto the field uh, for their uh, fourth offensive possession of the game here. 6.50 left in the first half. And uh, Seahawks, other than one play, have done really well defensively. So let's see if they can continue this trend. They've uh, I've been really impressed with how the defense has played tonight. So here we go. And they hand it off to, uh, uh, what's his name again? Frederick Reed. Yeah, Frederick Reed. And he kind of goes off the uh, right guard there and is able to get a, about a four-yard gain. So it'll be second and six for Cedar Crest here. Second and seven, I apologize, only a three yard gain. Uh, one of these days I'll be able to read the hash marks. So, But uh, Cedar Crest comes back up to the line here. Hopefully Seahawks defense is not getting too tired. They've been on the field quite a bit here, uh, but they've been they've done really well so far. So let's see if they can keep it going. There's a handoff to the up back and Seahawks say no, 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 no. Um, they get about a one yard gain is all. A sea of Seahawks in there on the tackle. Caden Cummings, I believe, along with Gage Burrow and a host of others. So nice job by the Seahawks have forced a third down and six for Cedar Crest from their own 28 yard line. Seahawks get a stop here, it would most likely force a punt and they'd still have plenty of time left here in the first half to put together a nice drive and get into the end zone and tie this game up here. 
So let's see how this third down goes. They snap the ball, they hand it off. It's a sweep left and just barely missed him was Trevor Beaner. And then he's able to get outside and continue to gain and he gets up to the 41 yard line. So it's gonna be a first and 10 for the Red Wolves here. And they stop the clock as the runner did go out of bounds, I believe or maybe just because the first down, we'll see what, it, he went out of bounds, but uh, they don't always tend to call that as commonly as they do at, at uh, higher levels above high school. So Cedar Crest now comes to the line, first and 10 on their own 41. And they hand it off to the tailback. Oh, wow, bounced right off the tackle of Trevor Beaner and now carries three Seahawks with him. Gage Burrow was in there, Justin Cutter. Frederick Reed though, with a heck of a run, he gets about a 10 yard gain which is gonna make it another first down for Cedar Crest as we're coming up, coming up on five minutes left here uh, in the first half. Just a quick reminder at halftime, AHS Live will pre be presenting the halftime show to you with all the homecoming festivities and performances uh, at halftime. As they take the snap, they hand it off. Trevor Beaner in on the tackle there and takes down number 20, but not until after he gains about four yards, which will make it second and six from the Seahawks 45 yard line. So right now the, the clock has been stopped. Well, it should be to move the chains, but they should get it rolling here once again. There we go. So Cedar Crest comes back up to the line, second and six. Let's see what the Seahawks can do here defensively on this play. As they send a man in motion, they hand it off to the up back. He does get a few yards, but nothing crazy. About two yards, it looks like they're going to spot it. Yeah, so it'll make it uh, uh, second down and eight to go for Cedar Crest. So they'll be at the Seahawk 43 yard line. So, like I said, Seahawks defense tonight has been pretty good. They've only given up a couple first downs, only one big play is we're going to have a timeout on the field. And with that timeout on the field, we are going to take a quick 30 second break here on AHS Live. with you here on AHS Live as uh, Cedar Crest comes up to the line. It's going to be second and eight. 421 left here in the first half. They hand it off to the up back Frederick Reed and he gets a host of yards there. He's going to be ta uh, tackled by numerous Seahawks. Gage Barrow, Pearson Nordmark in on the tackle. Uh, I believe, I'm trying to see who else that was, uh, Caden Cummings also in on the tackle for the Seahawks. So that makes it third and oh about three three and a half to go for cedar crest as cedar crest snaps it they hand it to reed once again this time he gets a few more yards gets it down to the 30 yard line so that's going to be a first down and 10 for cedar crest from the seahawks 30 yard line here and uh clock is stopped right now based on the first down but once they get things reset they'll get that clock moving again as it there it goes 7-0 seven no, seven nothing Cedar Crest here in the second quarter over your Seahawks. As they take the snap, hand it off to number 20. He, he sweeps out to the right and is able to get up field. And now he cuts back towards the middle of the field and making the Seahawks miss. He is cruising down to the 10-5. And he's going to be taken out, out of bounds at about the three-yard line. And we're going to have a flag also. Um, Oh, goodness. They're probably going to say that he got tackled out of bounds. It was Trevor Beaner and Joseph Cutter and uh, another Seahawk there that I couldn't see. But unfortunately, um, uh, uh, that uh, laundry on the field there is going to cost Seahawks half the distance to the goal.
So Cedar Crest, is, that's going to move the ball down to the one and a half yard line here. First and goal, 326 left in the second quarter. See if the Seahawks can force a turnover here, maybe. Um, tough to get four, uh, four stops from this short of a distance, but maybe they can force a turnover. Cedar Crest last time ran a quarterback sneak from this range. This time they hand off to Tyler Gray, and he is tackled, but unfortunately uh, by Caden Cummings, but I believe he also got his face mask in the process, but they did not signal a touchdown from what I'm seeing. Wasn't sure if it resulted in a touchdown from this angle, it's hard to tell. And he, the referee is signaling face mask. He's asked for his time, asked the clock operator to stop the clock. So it would be just half the distance to the goal. So yardage wise, it doesn't kill you, but unfortunately it gives them an extra opportunity to put it in. Although they have not moved the down marker yet. Okay, so it is a face mask, half the distance to the goal. And it looks like the ball is down on the one yard line here. Oh no, they, they did call a touchdown, I apologize. So the penalty will be on the kickoff as uh, Cedar Crest gets ready to kick the extra point here. And it is up and it is good. So that makes it 14 to nothing, Cedar Crest with 319 left here in the first half. So. With that, we are going to take a quick one minute break here on AHS Live. Canelli Keys Music in Anacortes is your one stop shop for all your musical needs. As a full service music retailer, Canelli Keys offers everything from sales and rentals to music lessons and repairs. Whatever you need, Canelli Keys Music has you covered. Visit our website at canellikeysmusic.com. Follow us on Facebook or stop by the store and speak with our knowledgeable staff. And make sure to check out our new music hall. Canelli Keys Music, located in 1904 Commercial Avenue in Anacortes. The Action Club is a Kiwanis club for adults with disabilities. Every second Saturday of every month, you can head to the Port of Anacortes web lockers at Seafarers Way and Q Avenue. Once there, you can recycle your computers, monitors, laptops, tablets, Kindles, portable DVD players, e-readers, and televisions. The money we collect during the e-cycle is used in several ways to benefit community service projects. Thank you, Dan. We're on AHS Live. Dave Wilder here with you. 319 left in the second quarter. It's Cedar Crest 14, Anacortes 0. Uh, Cedar Crest will be kicking off uh, from the Seahawks 45-yard line based on the face mask penalty that happened on the touchdown, that obviously moved the ball forward for the kickoff. We'll see if uh, they just try to kick it through into the end zone or maybe try to do something funky here uh, since they're in Seahawk territory. Doing an onside kick certainly wouldn't be out of the question at this point uh, as uh, it's already gonna be in Seahawk territory and they might try to recover something themselves. They're lining up as if it's a regular kickoff, uh, but we'll see what they choose to do as the kicker uh, Nathan Gurdy gets ready and he just boots it and it's going to be received at the one yard line by Joseph Cutter and he <coughs> excuse me he works his way up the field he cuts middle and now he's out, out to the left he's broke a few tackles there's a flag down on the field they are downing the ball at the uh, 18 yard line we'll see what the result of that flag is uh, I have a feeling this one might be on Cedar Crest but it could be a hold it's hard to tell on that far side of the field We'll see what the uh, officials come up with here. Uh, hopefully it will be five yard penalty, holding on the defense, so five yard penalty. So that means the ball will be placed at the 23 of the Anacorta Seahawks and that's where the Seahawks will start their drive with 310 left here in the second quarter. Uh, Seahawks still have two timeouts left so let's see if they can put together a drive here and get on the board uh, before halftime as they take the snap. And they look to hit Cutter with a pass. Gage Brogue hits him right, coming, sliding right across the middle. He gets the ball at the 30 yard line. So that's gonna make it uh, about, oh, second and four or so 
Uh, the clock is running, though, 2.56 and counting. And uh, uh, Seahawks looking to do something a little different here, maybe a little more of a hurry-up offense as we end the get near the end of the first half. Barreau once again back in the shotgun, and he's looking to pass once again. A little hook, uh, button hook there by uh, Joseph Cutter uh, out on the right side, but unfortunately it is incomplete. The only advantage to an incomplete pass, of course, is it stops the clock, but no yardage gain. So it's going to be third and four, third and three and a half, somewhere in there for the Seahawks. So um, uh, Seahawks here with uh, 239 left in the second quarter. We'll see um, uh, what Coach Hunter decides to do here on third down. So far, two passing plays as they are definitely trying to uh, get the ball up the field quickly here. And we'll see what... Uh, Happens here with the snap, and he's looking to pass. Once again, looking out at the left side, trying to find Cutter again, lined up on the opposite side on a slant pattern. Unfortunately, the throw was a little high and not able to be completed, so that's going to make it fourth down for the Seahawks. And I see Gage Barreau just talking with Coach Hunter, so that being the case, they may be going for it here. The only disadvantage of passing them when they're not completed too and, it, and you're turning the ball over on downs possibly is the fact that Cedar Crest now has uh, quite a bit of time left to score themselves. But we will see what the Seahawks have decided. They're taking a long time here, letting the play clock run down, and then I imagine they are going to call a timeout. They do. So that'll be a timeout by your Seahawks. That leaves them one. Let's take a quick 30-second break here on AHS Live. Okay, we're back with you here on AHS Live. As uh, you can see down on the field uh, where the cameras are showing, Coach Chris Hunter talking to his Seahawks offense here. And it appears on fourth down, the Seahawks are probably going to go for it. It's fourth and three. Seahawks have one timeout left. The ball is on their own 30, I'm trying to see, 30 yard line. So let's see what they decide to do here. Might see a chance at a hard count here, trying to get them off sides. So far, it has not worked uh, on, on this down anyways. They've got it to work a few times prior. Now there's eight seconds left on the play clock. Going to have to get a snap off or call a timeout. And it appears the Seahawks are going to call a timeout here, which will be their final timeout of the half. We're going to stay with you here on AHS Live during this timeout. So Seahawks may now set up to punt. I think they were uh, possibly hoping to get that... Uh, Offsides call again against Cedar Crest. Uh, they've already got it to work three times tonight, hoping to draw the first down and then continue their drive. Uh, but this deep in their own territory, I, I would imagine they're going to punt it, but with only three yards to go, who knows? And being down 14, Coach Hunter may want to go for it and try to make something happen here. The, the, the great thing is only him and the players will know in, until we see them line up and decide what they're going to do. But... Uh, uh, Beginning at 540 with the varsity in the first half. At seven. Once again, I do want to remind everyone uh, to uh, watch the halftime show uh, because AHS Live will be broadcasting that uh, for all the homecoming festivities. And the Seahawks line up once again. They send uh, Trevor Beaner back into the backfield. They're going to hand it off to him, and he's going to run up right center, and he's going to get a first down. That's a heck of a run by uh, Trevor Beaner there. Right side of the line gave him a nice hole to get through. And that's going to move the ball up to about the Seahawks' 40-and-a-half yard line. 2.28 left on the clock. Seahawks have no timeouts left this half, but that did result in a first down. And they've got about, oh, you know, 59 yards to go. This is something that could easily be done here as the clock is now running now that they've reset the chains and all. So Trevor Beaner is the deep back. I believe that's Eamon Gilden next to Gage Barreau, the quarterback. He's looking to pass again. 
Trevor Beaner gets a nice block, and they get a pass complete down the middle to Joseph Cutter. What a pass. Almost tipped by the defender for Cedar Crest, but a great pass right over the tip of his fingers. That gets the ball all the way down to the 35-yard uh, line at Cedar Crest. The Seahawks are kind of rushing up here. So that's a nice 25-yard completion, as you'll see on the replay. Watch Cutter come from the top of your screen uh, and cut back towards the middle. Look at this pass by Barreau. I mean, you want to talk about a dime, as Trent Dilfer would say, and Cutter gets his hands on the ball and then is able to uh, get a few more yards. As we go to the next play, though, uh, uh, snap is back to Gage Burrow, and unfortunately he is sacked. So they will drop back to the Cedar Crest 44, which will make for second and 19. We got about a minute and a half and counting going here. So we're going to have to uh, get, get things moving here for the Seahawks as uh, they have no timeouts left. Only way to stop the clock is to either get out of bounds or temporarily stop it with a first down. Uh, but on that, on those types of plays, of course, the clock will start moving once they get uh, the chains and the ball set. So here we go. Barreau directly under center. Pearson Normark behind him. They hand it off to Cutter on a jet sweep. He's going to get out to the left side. He's cutting up field. He's back up to the 36-yard line. Unfortunately, he was kept in bounds, I do believe. Yeah, the clock is still running. We're at 53 seconds and counting. And, or a 37-yard line, I apologize. So... We got to get things moving here if we would uh, like to get the ball into the end zone. But I really like what the Seahawks are doing here, putting a lot of pressure on the Cedar Crest defense and putting together a nice drive here. So Burrow back in the shotgun. They get the ball. It's a low snap. Uh, he Oh, missed block, but Burrow scrambles out to the right. He's either got to get out of bounds or throw the ball, and he's going to get out of bounds. Good decision by Gage Burrow. It took a little time, but the clock is now stopped, and he got to the 35-yard line. And so he's back to the original first down marker. So a nice nine yard gain. That's gonna make it third and 10 with 26 seconds left here in the second quarter. And the clock will not start until the snap now. So the Seahawks can take a little bit of a breather here and get the play in that they want, maybe even two uh, at this time, uh, just uh, based on uh, what, what the result of the first one is. So. Burrow brings his instructions back to the huddle. They break it, and here we go. Let's see what the Seahawks can do here. Down 14 to nothing, 26 seconds left in the first half. He drops back to pass. He looks for a screen pass. Oh, unfortunately, it's incomplete, trying to find Pierce and Nordmark. They were, oh, but we have a, a late, late flag. I have a feeling this is going to be a roughing the passer uh, on the quarterback. Burrow took what appeared to me to be a late hit. I don't know if we can see that on the replay or not. We'll see what the officials uh, do come up with, but I believe it's going to be a, 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 a late hit or roughing the passer, whatever they may want to call it at this level, and uh, which would give the Seahawks an automatic first down, I do believe. Uh, so we got 21 seconds left here. Seahawks putting together a heck of a drive starting on their own. Okay, uh, that personal foul, 44, late hit. 15-yard penalty, first down. And it's a first down, you bet. There it is. So the Seahawks now, the ball will be spotted at the 20-yard line. First and 10, 21 seconds left. Boy, the Cedar Crest coach is not happy with that call, but uh, I think if he had the opportunity to see it on video, he might find that the officials got that one correct. So see what the Seahawks can put together here. No timeouts left, so they're either going to have to spike it, get out of bounds, Temporarily stop it with the first down. That's about it. So shotgun formation, Trevor Beaner's deep back, Pearson Nor Nordmark right next to Bro. He drops back, to, looks left. He's trying to find Cutter in the end zone. And a heck of a play by the defensive back from Cedar Crest as him and Cutter both had the same opportunity for the ball, but he was able to tip it away uh, before Cutter could get his hands on it. Heck of a throw by Bro. Just great coverage uh, by the Cedar Crest defensive back. And so it'll be second and 10 from the 20 yard line, 15 seconds left here for the Seahawks first half. Once again, quick recap, no timeouts left. So you gotta either get it into the end zone, get out of bounds or spike the ball uh, uh, if they don't get a first down to fully get the clock stopped here. So they come up to the line, Burrow is directly under center this time. Nordmark is behind him. 
They got two wing backs. I think they're looking to get Beaner on a screen pass, but unfortunately, uh, Barreau just gets leveled. Legal hit uh, and is not able to uh, complete the pass. So that's going to make it third and 10 with 11 seconds here uh, for the Seahawks. They are definitely threatening here. Uh, definitely the best uh, overall drive for the Seahawks thus far. And uh, let's see if they can complete it by getting this ball into the end zone. Probably got time for maybe two plays. Uh, I'm guessing not much more than that, depending how long this one takes. It would be amazing if they could get more than two plays off in 11 seconds. But let's see what happens here. They come to the line. Stephen Downey, the center, gets down over the ball. And we got Pearson Nordmark back there uh, next to uh, Burrow. Beaner is the deep back. And they're looking. Burrow's going to have to get rid of the ball. He's about to get hammered. He does. And uh, uh, he, was, he was under hot pursuit from Cedar Crest. The pass does fall incomplete which leaves five seconds left. It's gonna be fourth down. And we're gonna see Matthew Hendricks come out here and Seahawks are gonna to try to get on the board with a field goal. And uh, I like this, Matthew's a good kicker and just trying to get some points on the board before halftime here. So with the ball being on the 20, this is gonna be about a, let's see where they, uh, they get the tee down at the 26, 27. So it's gonna be a 36, 37 yard field goal attempt. Joseph Cutter will be the holder uh, for Matthew Hendricks, the kicker. And let's see what happens here. It's a low snap. Cutter gets it down, and Hendricks kicks it, but it's just short, just short by maybe a yard or two, unfortunately. So that leaves two seconds left here on the clock in the first half. So I imagine uh, Cedar Crest, uh, as they will get the ball there, will probably just kneel down and call it a half. But let's see what happens here as we go through the change of possession. Of course, we'll stay here with you. Uh, get through this and then we'll get uh, some of our sponsors in quickly at the start of halftime and then uh, get to the awesome homecoming halftime show that AHS Live is going to broadcast for you. So Cedar Crest uh, comes up to the line. Seahawks are in a prevent defense just in case they try to do something funny. Uh, most coaches at the high school level will not in this uh, setup here. They're usually just going to kneel down Oh, they, they sneak it forward a little bit. And there we go. That's the end of the end of the half there. So uh, he gets about a two-yard gain. That'll end the first half. So your score, Cedar Crest 14, Anacortes 0. Dave Wilder here with you on AHS Live. We will be back in two minutes. At the Senior College, we believe that learning should never stop. Anacortes Senior College offers lifelong learning opportunities to adults over 50 in a relaxed atmosphere. No tests or homework. ASC is ran by volunteers including retired college professors, scientists, artists, business and medical professionals. Fall, winter and spring courses are held Tuesdays and Thursdays. For more information and registration forms, go to SeniorCollege.org. And Marcus Stanley. Tonight's field show is Carl y Douglas's Kung Fu Fighting, arranged by Jay Dawson, and the visual program written by our director of bands, Christopher Dial. Ladies and gentlemen, let's hear you make some noise for the Anna Cortis High School Marching Band.
And now, ladies and gentlemen, your Anacortes High School cheer squad. Ladies and gentlemen, your Anacortes High School cheer squad. Now, ladies and gentlemen, for homecoming this week, float building took place this morning. And here are some of the results from the activities this week. In fourth place, we have the freshmen with 100 points. In third place, the sophomores with 200 points. In second place were the juniors with 300 points. And in first place, the seniors with 400 points. <laughs> and now here are the totals for each class for this year's homecoming. In fourth place were the juniors with 1,025 points. In third place were the sophomores with 1,250 points. In second place, the freshmen with 1,275 points. And in first place, we have the seniors with 1,700 points. Good work, everyone. We've had a great homecoming this week. And now, introducing our royalty. For the freshman class, introducing the princess, Ariana Bickley. And the prince is Tony Rios. For your sophomore class, the princess, Emily Carlson. And the prince, Cooper Nichols. And your junior class, princess, Hannah Lesh. And prince, Jaden White. And for your senior class, Princess Cabri Brittle. And Prince Aiden Rattel. And ladies and gentlemen, our homecoming king and queen, Queen is Sierra Olivier. And the king is Caleb Cross. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and it was a great week here with homecoming. Thank you.
Behind every great Anacortes club and team, there's an unspoken hero. People that get us our team gear, organize our team dinners, and support us in everything else we need. From every student athlete in AHS, thank you Saba, for the football team's two-a-day shirts, the volleyball team's warm-up gear, and everything else in between. Saba, the Seahawk Athletic Booster Association. Each year, thousands of fantastic pictures are taken by yearbook photographers of AHS sporting events, assemblies, performing arts, and more. The best of these photos are now available to you online. Just point your browser to ahs.smugmug.com. You can download digital images or order prints right from your computer or phone with the SmugMug app. How cool is that? Support the rhododendron and your students by using ahs.smugmug.com. No two-way updates yet at this point, uh, but I can tell you the matchups for tonight, just to kind of give you an idea, are Bellingham versus Blaine, Mount Lake Terrace at Seaholm, Cedar Woolley at Burlington Edison, and Linden at Lakewood. And of course, we're here at Seahawk Stadium here in Anacortes, Washington. Beautiful Seahawk Stadium, by the way. If you have not had an opportunity to come see this place in person, you need to do so. And the new high school that, uh, uh, the main building that they've got built. They'll have another building uh, ready for next year along with uh, getting the uh, gym and Brodniak Hall open back up as that phase will be completed also. So 14 to nothing, Cedar Crest. Uh, to start off the uh, second half, uh, Matthew Hendricks will be doing the kickoff here for the Seahawks as uh, they will have, Cedar Crest will have uh, three three deep backs here and it looks like he tries an onside kick it does bounce off the Cedar Crest player but unfortunately uh, Seahawks or excuse me Cedar Crest did recover it uh, I kind of like that call coming out of halftime you're down 14 nothing trying to get yourself some good starting field position and it almost worked it bounced off the Cedar Crest player it's just Cedar Crest uh, was able to recover it so um, they will be starting at their own 44 yard line first and 10 and um, Seahawks uh, have had some really good defensive plays tonight. Let's see if they can start off the second half defensively like they did the first half and uh, get uh, Cedar Crest to go uh, three and out or four and out here. As they run it up the right side, a bevy of Seahawks players. I see Gage Barreau, Jared Wright, and many others. Trevor Beaner comes out of the pile. And... One other that I just can't get the jersey number on, but uh, nice job by the Seahawks. It is a uh, uh, ball is spotted right at midfield, so it's going to be a six-yard gain. So it'll be set or five-yard gain, excuse me. So it'll be second and five as they send a man in motion. Shotgun snap was a little high, but he finds a screen pass. That's the play earlier. It worked for a big gain for him, but not this time. Not this time. Joseph Cutter and then Trevor Beaner comes in and finishes off the tackle. And that's going to be marked for about a two-yard gain. 
So it's going to be third or three yard gain, excuse me. So it's going to be third and two for Cedar Crest here in the third quarter. They are on the Seahawks 47 yard line. So right here uh, would be a good, good uh, start for the Seahawks to get a stop here. Of course, uh, usually in this part of the field, in a lot of high school football, they'll go for it on fourth down, but we'll see what they decide to do if we can get them to that point. Shotgun formation, send a man in motion. He looks right, now looks left. He overthrows his receiver, that's incomplete. So it's gonna be fourth and two for Cedar Crest. So nice job by the Hawks there in uh, getting it to fourth down. Now let's see what Cedar Crest decides to do. I don't really see a lot of uh, change coming in here. Looks like the quarterback is back in. Yeah, they're going to be going for it. So it'll be fourth and two from the Seahawks' 47-yard line. Actually, about fourth and one, but it's a long one, so they're calling it fourth and two. And they drew the Seahawks offside, so Seahawks get a little bit of a taste of their own medicine as they were able to do that to Cedar Crest. Three times oh, the first down. The encroachment, first down. defense, and now five yard penalty, uh, first down. Back, and that will be a first down now for Cedar Crest with the five yard penalty. So the ball gets moved down to the Seahawk 42. 10 41 left here in the uh, third quarter. And it's going to be first down and 10. Quarterback is right under center. Seahawks send a blitz, Pearson Nordmark, and he almost gets the running back, just misses him. And it ends up being. Uh, uh, who is that? Oscar Acosta with the tackle for the Seahawks. So, but not after, not until after he gained about two and a half, three, three yards. So it'll be second and seven for Cedar Crest. As Seahawks get everyone organized here, there's a receiver way out wide at the top of the screen, but they, they did get a DB out there. Caden Cummings is out there now as they really set up the left side of their line here, but they're dropping back to pass. They look for a little pass uh, dump right down the middle there, and they are able to get a, ooh, I don't know, about a yard, maybe two. Yeah, so they're down to the Seahawks 36 yard line, which is gonna make it about third and four. Yeah, third and four here for Cedar Crest. So they will come to the line and see if the Seahawks can get another third down stop here as they get everyone set up here. They send a man in motion, then they hand it off the up back Reed, and he's tackled. Nice tackle by Pearson Nordmark, and he stops him shy of the first down by about a yard. So it will be fourth and one. Uh, once again, I would expect Cedar Crest to go for it here. Uh, as uh, most high school kickers, uh, or college for that matter, are not going to kick a 50-yard field goal. So uh, fourth and one, and Cedar Crest, the Red Wolves bring their guys up to the line and see if the Seahawks can get a stop here uh, on the fourth and one. Looks like they're wanting to send Trevor Beaner on a blitz. Shotgun formation. They're going to pass. They're looking to pass, but they're, they're oh, oh, they had him, they had him, they had him. They just missed but he has to throw it incomplete. So that is a turnover on downs for the Seahawks. Great pressure there by Trevor, Trevor Beaner and Cameron Rice both. They weren't able to get the sack, but they forced the quarterback to have, have to throw on the run and he threw it low and the receiver was unable to catch it down at the 30 yard line. And so now it will be the Seahawks ball, first and 10 at their own 33 and an opportunity to uh, uh, get the ball down. Now remember the last drive the Seahawks had at the end of the second half, they mixed the pass and the run pretty well and were able to move the ball quite a ways downfield. Got into field goal range, uh, but it was just one yard shy for Matthew Hendricks. So let's see if they can uh, do the same here, except maybe get all the way to the end zone as, as uh, Barreau takes a shotgun snap. He hands it off to Beaner who cuts out left, now goes to cut back middle, but the defenders are there. He will get a one yard gain though out of that. So it'll be second and nine for your Anacortes Seahawks. Um, yeah, they, they did spot it there. Okay, it looked like the uh, uh, referee was wanting to move it back, but he said no. So so second and nine as Burrow brings uh, uh, Chris Hunter's directions to the huddle. They break, and we'll uh, see how they line up here. 
Joseph Cutter out wide right at the top of your screen. They got uh, Trevor Beaner deep and Pearson Nordmark right next to Burrow. They hand it off to Beaner right up the middle. Great blocking by the line. Nice run. It's going to get marked at the 39-yard line. So that's going to make it third and four for the Seahawks. Nice running play there by the Seahawks. They just ran it right up the left guard's uh, uh, area, that the left guard area there, and great push by the line. And Trevor Beaner followed right behind him, got a nice six-yard gain there on second down. So third and four, just under seven and a half minutes left here in the third quarter, 14-0, Cedar Crest over Anacortes. And Burrow will be back in the shotgun. Same alignment as last time. Quick snap. They hand it off to Beaner. He goes behind his left side of the line again. He's going to get a first down easily. They push him back, but the spot is at the 45-yard line. And so that ends up uh, being about a five-yard gain once again. So it'll be first and 10 for the Seahawks on their own 45-yard line. And as you heard the PA announcer Craig Volkman say, That'll be another Seahawks first down. So, so far, Seahawks off to a good start here offensively and defensively, both to start the second half. Let's see if they can keep this thing rolling now. As they come out, same formation. They, they seem to like this formation here. It's working well for them right now. So they get the snap to Bro. He hands it off to Beaner once again, and he's just going to go right up the gut. And Cedar Crest keeps sending a bunch of guys to tackle him, but it's taken quite a bit to take him down but he gets a two-yard gain out of it before they can bring him down. So that's going to make it second and eight uh, for the Seahawks. So, so far, it appears to me that the Seahawks have just pretty much come out in the same formation each play, um, and uh, they're just handing the ball off to Beaner, and he's getting positive yard each time. The linesman making good pushes for him and giving him holes to run through, and he's getting you know, two, three, four, five yard chunks at a time here. So let's see what uh, they decide to do here now. Steven Downey gets down over the ball to center for the Seahawks. Same formation, they're not changing nothing. They're just gonna cram it down their throat here, it looks like. And yeah, here we go again. Uh, but we got a stoppage in play before the snap. I believe the play clock may have expired and that would be really unfortunate as that would be a uh, five yard penalty against the Hawks. It is a delay of game on the offense. So that will kick the Seahawks back five yards and make it third, or excuse me, set, they'll replay second down. So it'll be second 13 with 6.03 left here in the third quarter. And uh, not something you wanna have happen, but it's not the worst thing in the world. You, it's a lot better than turning the ball over or taking a huge loss here so Seahawks come out once again same formation Beaners deep they look to pass though they're looking for Joseph Cutter once again there's a little uh, uh, oh we got some action after the play here but uh, no 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 penalty of any sort so but uh, anyways uh, was not able to complete Burrow was not able to complete the pass to uh, uh, Joseph Cutter so that's going to make it third and 13 from their own 42. So chances are this is two down territory in this sense uh, that they would probably go for it on fourth down from this field position, but we'll see. Uh, they need to get some positive yardage here so that way it allows Chris Hunter to make, Coach Chris Hunter to make that decision. So Burrow gets them up the line. They're back in the wing T offense. There's some miscommunication. Heck of a block by Beaner and Burrow escapes. And he gets the ball downfield, and he finds Caleb Hunter for a first down as they will complete it, mark it down right at the Cedar Crest 45, which is just enough for the first down. Heck of a throw by Burrow, and Caleb Hunter took a heck of a shot, as you'll see on the replay here. Good job by the Seahawks, though, and you'll see Burrow escaping. And thank goodness, because 99 was coming up behind to get him, but... Caleb Hunter did a great job of just getting to the first down marker and getting himself open. Joseph Cutter with a nice little block there. And they were, Burrow was able to make the pass, complete it. Oh, they're, they're actually, that's a terrible spot. They've now made it fourth down. I apologize, folks. So Burrow's just going to go on the sneak and get the first down here uh, with ease. It's going to be a three-yard gain. That should have been a first down in the first place, but it is what it is. So. It's now a first down, but unfortunately, Gage Burrow, the quarterback, is down on the turf at this point in time after the sneak. And uh, 
uh, the coach is out there with him. And then we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll have the trainer coming out here soon. So uh, real quickly, while they're tending to Gage Barreau here, why don't we take a quick 30 second break here on AHS Live. We're going to take a 30 second break here on AHS Live. Everybody loves a green lawn, but where does runoff from your lawn end up? Runoff from your lawn winds up in the stormwater system when we get heavy rains. From there, it runs untreated into the Salish Sea. Excess fertilizer can cause harmful algal blooms which use up the oxygen, causing oxygen-free dead zones. This has already become an issue in Hood Canal in the Southern Sailor Sea. Harmful algal blooms can make toxins that make lakes such as Campbell and Hart unsafe for pets and swimming. Weed killers can cause population declines and deformations in amphibians. Pesticides in lawn products can build up in the Salish Sea environment and kill beneficial insects. Don't be shellfish, keep the Salish Sea clean. And we're back here on AHS Live, Dave Wilder with you. Uh, we uh, left uh, with Gage Burrow, the starting quarterback for the Seahawks, uh, down on the field, appeared uh, to be slightly injured, but Gage was able to walk off under his own power after being tended to by the trainer and coach Chris Hunter there. So could be a big loss for the Seahawks, but we'll see what uh, the new quarterback can do here in the meantime, and we'll uh, try to find out what's going on with Gage, but we're going to have a timeout. Um, uh, let's see who they assign it to. Uh, to the Seahawks. Good timeout by Coach Hunter. He probably wants to have an opportunity uh, to get with the uh, incoming quarterback and just get things straight and have a good talk with the kids and just let them know that, hey, you know, everything's going to be okay. This is why we all practice together and, and why we have backups because. Uh, uh, it, this is uh, unfortunately part of the game, but uh, you know, as Coach uh, Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson say, next man up, um, the game keeps going. And they're going to take good care of Gage over there on the bench. Like I said, he walked off under his own power, so I'm sure everything's going to be just fine. So Coach Hunter appears to be done talking with his team and has sent him back out onto the field. I still haven't got to see who the quarterback's going to be. I believe it's going to be number three, Hayden Weaver, uh, will be the backup quarterback. Hayden is a sophomore. Well, let's see. What, no, it, I apologize. Hayden appears to be going in at wide receiver. Joseph Cutter moves from wide receiver to corner or to quarterback. Excuse me. So they send Weaver in motion, and Cutter's just going to take off with it to the left here, and he goes to cut up field. Not an opening there, but he does uh, maybe gets a yard here. Um, so that'll make it uh, second down. And I apologize, two yard loss. I apologize. So second down and 12 uh, for the Seahawks with 440 and counting remaining here in the third quarter. Still 14 to nothing, Cedar Crest. And Joseph Cutter goes towards the sideline to uh, get the play call. He now brings it back to the huddle here. Uh, I saw Joseph play quarterback last year on the C team uh, and did a fine job for him. So that this is nothing new to Joseph as far as the position. It's just a matter of now you're playing at varsity speed instead of C team speed. But Joseph's one of the fastest players on the field anyway. So C hands it off to, oh, to Pearson Nordmark. Uh, the ball did come loose there, but it does not appear uh, that Cedar Crest got to it, I believe. Uh, Pearson was able to recover it himself as it started to come loose just as he was going down. So, uh, but he does get a two yard, or excuse me, a one yard gain. So that'll make it third and 11 
uh, for the Seahawks here. Um, uh, as Gage Burrow now checks back into the game, Hayden Weaver will check out. So we're going to see Cutter go back to wide receiver. Gage Burrow back on the field, excuse me, at quarterback. So here we go, third and 11 from the Cedar Crest 43. Wing formation. Gage is dropping back to pass. Unfortunately, there is no protection, but he breaks free of the tackle. And he, oh, it's going to be picked off uh, by number 17 of Cedar Crest, who then fumbles it at the end, but they're going to rule that he was down. So Gage had to throw across his body. There's a lot of activity going on after the play here. Uh, but it is Cedar Crest ball. I know Stephen Downey has the ball, uh, but he was down. I could, uh, uh, fortunately, where I was, I could see. Uh, perfectly uh, for once, uh, and the runner was down. So unfortunately, Gage checks back into the game, but there is an interception. Um, and to be honest, it's probably ended up about where he was going to get sacked anyways because uh, number 99 came in unblocked and was just bearing down on Gage, and somehow he slipped that tackle, uh, got the pass off, but it did uh, uh, turn into an interception. So Cedar Crest has the ball at the Seahawk. 46, and they look to pass over the middle, and Joseph Cutter almost picks it off, just off of his fingertips there. Heck of an effort by Joseph, and so that will make it second and 10 for the Cedar Crest Red Wolves. So 3-13 left here in the third quarter. Uh, Cutter seems to be upset with himself. Don't be upset with yourself, big guy. That was a heck of an effort to even get your hands on that thing, so... Uh, let's see uh, how the Seahawks can do here as Cedar Crest comes to the line at second down and 10. And they send a man in motion. And they get the snap off. And they're looking to pass once again. They're looking to go way downfield. And, oh, some confusion on the coverage for the Seahawks there. And their receiver is able to get it down. He catches it about the 32-yard line, and they're going to and then with his little run, they're going to mark him out of bounds at the 26. But we have a flag back towards the line of scrimmage opposite, well, not opposite, but kind of in the area of the quarterback, I guess. Maybe a holding on Cedar Crest? That would be great for the Hawks if that was the case. Illegal formation Illegal on the offense. Five-yard penalty. So that pass play means nothing. It will be a five-yard penalty from the line of scrimmage. Uh, which was the 41-yard uh, line. Yeah, 41-yard line So of the Seahawks. So that's going to, or excuse me, the 46-yard line of the Seahawks. So that will kick the ball back to the 49 of Cedar Crest. And it will be a repeat of second down. And it will now be second and 15. So the last two plays, Cedar Crest has decided they want to try to pass the ball downfield, hoping to catch the Seahawks off guard here. And it appeared they did, but there was a uh, penalty in the process, so it did not matter. So they drop. Uh, he goes back and he hands it off to to a, a sweeping running back, and Stephen Downey forced him further wide, uh, wide to the right, and then Caden Cummings comes in and makes the tackle. Heck of a play by the Seahawks. That's going to be uh, quite a loss of yards there. So, goodness, they were at the 49. Now they're at the 43, so another six-yard loss. So now it's third and, uh, goodness, third and 21. Is that right? Uh, let's see, 10, 13, 14, 18, 19, 21. Heck, I can do math. What do you know? Anywho, uh, it is now third and 21 from their own 43, 220 and counting as he drops back to pass. He's looking down the field right, right up the middle, uh, but it is incomplete to the receiver, number 24, Tanner Payne, the tight end, I should say. So now it is fourth and 21. And uh, what a heck of a turn of events there. Cedar Crest thought they were way down in Anacortes territory, but... Uh, Turned out not to be the case due to a penalty. And now we have Cedar Crest lined up to punt. We have Trevor Beaner and we have Caden Cummings back deep. They kick it towards Beaner. He catches it about the 18 yard line and he heads out to the right. He's up to the 24, 25, 27, 26, 27, 27 yard line is where they mark it. Unfortunately, there is a flag on the near side of the field here. 
and it's usually a penalty on the returning team at that point, whether it be a hold, a block, illegal block, what have you. So that's going to bring the ball all the way back to the spot of the foul, plus the penalty at that point. Um, so the flag is laid down at the 22-yard line. Let's see what the penalty is. Both teams seem to be yeah. moving that direction. So Blindside block on the offense. 50. Yeah. Block in the back on the offense. So that will be a penalty on the Seahawks. Uh, it'll be taken from the spot, which is the 22-yard line, all the way back to the... Well, let's see where they're going to mark it here. They're not sure if they truly decided. They've got it at the 13. Oh, so must be a 10-yard penalty. They just had the flag off by a yard. But So the Seahawks will start this drive at their own 13-yard line, first down and 10. They've had a lot of success running the ball this half. And uh, let's see uh, if they decide to do that again or if they're going to try and pass. Let's, let's have a look here. So Gage hands off Trevor Beaner. He sweeps right. He now cuts up field. And he is upended. It's going to be about a one-yard game. But there's flags all over the field, one back near the play and another one late. Best case, this is going to be offsetting penalties. Uh, but if they're both on the Seahawks, it, this would be really bad. And the Seahawks are... Moving quite a ways back themselves, lining up in their huddle. So my guess is that it's usually a sign that they're both against them and the ball would get moved back. But let's see uh, what happens here as the officials have their little conversation and figure out exactly what they're going to do. Of course, Cedar Crest will have to choose which penalty it is that they want to take if they're both against the Seahawks. Uh, my assumption is they would take the one that happened back at the 14-yard line. And we got, then that way, we uh, got two fouls. They, uh, we got holding uh, on the uh, offense. So, we got late uh, hit, personal foul on the offense. On the offense. And uh, the other one was most likely a late hit. But they're going to mark, mark it off on the uh, – uh, holding call on the offense. So that puts it back to the seven yard line uh, of the Seahawks and that's gonna be, that's gonna make it uh, first down and uh, 16 as they'll have to replay that as the penalty was half the distance of the goal. So Burrow under center, he hands it to the up back and they're still going and that was uh, I believe it was Pearson Nordmark. Hard to tell from here. But uh, uh, they pushed him quite a ways back, but forward progress has him uh, at the uh, nine yard line. So that's going to be a three yard gain. So it will be second and 15 to go for the Seahawks. They line up in their wing formation. Nord back, Nordmark is the deep back, sorry. And they just hand it off to Cutter on a reverse. He's coming out to the left. He cuts up to the right, breaks one tackle, but is brought down eventually at the 10-yard line. So that will be, or 11-yard line, excuse me. That will be a two-yard gain. That's going to make it fourth and, or three-yard gain, sorry. It's going to make it fourth and 12, I believe. And from here, I would imagine the Seahawks are going to punt. Uh, but... Coach Hunter says no, not with 50 seconds left in the third, third quarter being down two touchdowns. Oh, it's only third down. I apologize. No wonder they're going for it. So Caleb Hunter checks into the game uh, for the Seahawks. As Perot is in the shotgun formation, he looks to pass. He's looking to get the ball downfield to Joseph Cutter, and it's just a little bit high. I thought contact might have came a little early, but it looks like it was just a good play. Uh, by the defensive back of the Red Wolves. So that will force fourth down. And I would imagine that the Seahawks will punt from here with 31 seconds left in the third quarter. Still 14 to nothing, Cedar Crest. Pearson Nordmark is right at the goal line is where he'll receive the snap on this punt. And he's 
counting his players, making sure they don't have too many on the field. And good thing he did. They're sending Joseph Cutter off the field, and then that will make it 11. And he gets a nice snap, gets a nice high kick. Should be good coverage here for the Hawks. He gets that ball, and it just kind of continues. Oh, now they get it down. It's taken down by uh, Aiden Ufkus, number 53. So they get it out to the 46-yard line, so that's going to be a 35-yard punt once again for Pearson Nordmark. And uh, uh, we will have uh, Cedarcrest taking over the ball on the Seahawks. Uh, 45, actually, is where they've marked it. So it'll be first and 10 for Cedarcrest. 20 seconds left in the third quarter. And uh, ball is on the 45-yard line uh, for, uh, of the Anacorta Seahawks here. Quarterback gets uh, under center. Takes a snap. He hands it off to Frederick Reed, who gets a big run. Gets all the way back into the defensive backfield. The Seahawks gauge for row, one of many Seahawks in on the tackle. It's going to be about a nine-yard gain, so that will make it second and one as the clock continues to run down, and that will most likely end the third quarter as the horn goes off. So with that, 14-0 Cedarcrest, end of three. We are going to take a one-minute break here on AHS Live. Go a few blocks into Old Town Anacortes and you'll find Dad's Diner. With breakfast and lunch served all day, you'll definitely find the perfect meal. All of their food is prepared fresh each day, from the delicious house salad with salmon to the savory BLT. Dad's Diner, open Tuesday through Sunday, is located on Commercial between 9th and 10th Street. Come on down and grab a bite. One large hot and ready classic, please. That'll be five bucks. I left my wallet in the car. Four seventy five. Thank you. Everyone's got 20 quarters for a large hot and ready classic. Little Caesars, world's easiest way to pizza. Pizza, pizza. And we're back here on AHS Live at the start of the fourth quarter as Cedarcrest takes a snap, hands the ball off, and runs it kind of up the middle there. Uh, looks like they're going to uh, get the ball down to about the 33-yard line, which is enough for a first down. So it'll be first and 10 as Cedarcrest tries to get back up to the line quick, trying to put some pressure on the Seahawks' defense here. It's actually at the 30, yeah, 33. They send a man in motion looking for a screen pass, and Trevor Beaner comes in and makes a play and is able to knock it away, which allows the uh, uh, clock to stop and will force a second down. Um, I'd like to say to uh, the broadcast club, by the way, feel free to quit running the Dad's Diner ad. No offense to Dad's Diner, but they're not open this time of night, and it makes me way too darn hungry this time of night. If you haven't ate there, you do need to eat there, though. Their food's awesome. Biscuits and gravy is amazing. Anyways, back to the football game here. Cedar Crest lines up, sends a man in motion. They hand it off to that man that ran in motion. He tries to go up the middle. No go. As many Seahawks are in on the tackle, I see Stephen Downey, Caden Cummings coming out of that pile along with Trevor Beaner. So that's going to make it uh, third and ten for Cedar Crest as they have the ball here at the Seahawks 33-yard uh, line. So third and 10, 11.20 left and counting. Cedar Crest slowed things back down to a normal pace here, not rushing up to the line like they did the last couple plays. And they are in a spread formation here. Three receivers left, one right, one tail back. And they get the snap to their quarterback. He's looking downfield on that receiver on the right side. What a heck of a play by Joseph Cutter to deflect that pass and uh, kept himself in good position, no hand in the back, got his left hand up and knocked that ball down and uh, uh, for, has now forced a fourth down for Cedar Crest. Chances are this position on the field, they will go for it, but it will be fourth and 10 
Seahawks defense really stepping it up this possession here. Uh, yet to give up any points here in the second half and uh, uh, didn't really give up a lot in the first half. 14 points, yes, but yardage-wise, not a ton. So they look to pass again. They're, he's looking left. He's throwing it way downfield towards the end zone. Joseph Cutter goes up for it. He picks the pass. He Around the five-yard line, he runs it back up the sideline, gets it to about the 20... Seven-ish yard, 25-yard line. What a play by Joseph Cutter. Let's please watch the replay on this. And uh, not a badly thrown ball, just Joseph Cutter goes up and just beats the receiver to the ball, as you'll see here. Watch at the end of the play here. Here comes the pass. Watch Cutter get up and elevate out and, uh, and is able to take it in and then uh, ends up running it all the way back up to the 25-yard line. Heck of, a t heck of a turnover for the Seahawks. Good timing with 10.50 left in the game. Only down two scores. That was something they needed. Maybe that'll get the momentum overall change here as they pitch the ball to Caden Cummings. He cuts back up the middle. Now he gets out to the right side. And, oh, I would like to see a flag there for a late hit, but we're not. He gets the ball out to the 35, though. And let's see if that's enough for the first down. Should be, yes. They tell him to move the chains, so that will be first and 10 for your Seahawks. First time we, that I recall anyways that we've seen Caden Cummings uh, get the ball on a sweep tonight and it certainly turned out well. Of course you can't run the same play every time but I like the result of that one. So let's see what happens here. As they got Beaner and Cutter as their wing backs, Nordmark is the tailback. They hand it, fake it to Beaner, hand it back off to Cutter, back up the middle. He runs it up and he keeps going. He's up to the 47 yard line of the Seahawks 47. So. Another heck of a run for the Seahawks. That's a first down, 12 yards on the play, 10-23 left in the game. Seahawks have just ripped off two huge running plays here uh, to start off this drive right after that turnover uh, forced by Joseph Cutter with the interception. So the Seahawks come up to the line. Stephen Downey will get lined up over the ball. Nice article in the Skagit Valley Herald this week, by the way, on Stephen Downey if you haven't read it, you should do so on ghostgadget.com. He snaps the ball directly to Beaner, who runs middle, then right, and he gets some nice yardage out of that play. They end up getting about a five-yard gain, so it will be second and five, just under 10 minutes left here in the game, and they are now in Cedar Crest territory uh, on the Cedar Crest 47-yard line. And the play clock and the game clock have now started as they've got everything reset after the first down. Seahawks step back up to the line. Burrow's going to be, oh, we got a stoppage in play. The timeout, Cedar Crest. So with that, uh, we're going to take a quick break, 30-second uh, break here on AHS Live. The Action Club is a Kiwanis club for adults with disabilities. Every second Saturday of every month, you can head to the Port of Anacortes web lockers at Seafarers Way and Kew Avenue. Once there, you can recycle your computers, monitors, laptops, tablets, Kindles, portable DVD players, e-readers, and televisions. The money we collect during the e-cycle is used in several ways to benefit community service projects. Thank you, Thank you. You. Missing my buddy Lou D'Amelio. I'm not going to be able to talk tomorrow since I'm having to do all the talking tonight. Some people might think that's a good thing. But uh, anyways, uh, Seahawks starting off here. 929, second down and four on the Cedar Crest 47-yard line. They snap the ball directly to Beaner. He hands it off to Cutter. He reverses back out to the left, cuts up field, and he gets up to about the 43-yard line. If that is where they mark it, that should be enough for a first down. They've asked him to stop the clock and now move the chain. So that's the third first down of this drive already for your Seahawks. 9-18 on the clock, 14 to nothing is your score. Seahawks have all three timeouts left. I'm sure they're gonna try to save those for the next opportunity they get the ball. Right now, no need. They continue to get clock stoppages with the first down and, and uh, 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 doing it in one or two plays so far each time. So here we go, Burrow with Beaner behind him. We got a flag. 
Not sure. I didn't see anyone jump on either side, so I'm not sure of the. Okay, dead, dead, dead ball encroachment on the defense. On Cedar Crest for the fourth time tonight. So that will be an, a free five yards for your Seahawks. The ball now has been moved to the 38 yard line. And they hand it off to, oh, oh. <laughs> They hand it off to uh, uh, Caden Cummings there. He slips a bit and almost got the first down, but it, when he slipped, his knee just barely touched the ground one yard shy. So it will be uh, third down, or excuse me, second down and one for the Seahawks here on the Red Wolves 34 yard line. Seahawks putting together a heck of a drive here. 825 and counting left in the game. And now we got Beaner as the deep back behind Barreau. Nordmark is up next to him. They snap it to uh, Barreau. They get handed off to Beaner right up the gut. And he's going to get about a two-yard gain. So it will once again be a first down for your Seahawks. That is the fourth first down of this drive. Nice job by the Seahawks here. Yeah, as Gage Barreau gets his instructions from Coach Hunter. Love the energy that I see from Coach Hunter on the sidelines here. Just... Seems super positive, high energy, and uh, uh, I know that feeds well uh, to the players, I would imagine. Uh, and based on their uh, effort here tonight, I would, I would have to think I'm right. So they direct snap to Beaner and hand it back off to Cutter on that reverse once again. Cedarcrest this time was expecting that, and they tackle Cutter at the line of scrimmage. No gain, second and 10 on the 32-yard line. Is that where they got it? Yeah, 32 yard line uh, of Cedar Crest. So 737 and counting left in the game here. Still a huge crowd here in the stands. They have not given up on their Seahawks uh, tonight. And uh, they are really getting after it here on the field as they ha get it to Bro, hands it off to Cutter. He cuts back to the left and he gets a nice game. That's gonna get him down to the 29 yard line. Yep, so that will be third and six now for the Seahawks. And so let's see uh, if the Seahawks can convert once again for another first down here. Um, hopefully they can just get the ball into the end zone and, and uh, uh, kick the ball off, get a stop, and then drive right down and tie this sucker up. Let's see. Down he's down over the ball. Gage right under center, Nordmark behind him. Cutter and Beaner are your wingbacks. They snap it to Bro. They hand it off to Beaner with a sweep to the right, but unfortunately, Cedar Crest knew what was going on apparently right from the get-go, and that ends up taking them all the way back to the 35-yard line. So it will be fourth and 13 for the Seahawks as Gage Bro brings in the instructions, Jared Wright has checked into the game for the Seahawks in place of Aiden Ufkus. Seahawks back up to the line. Shotgun snap. They get it to Burrow. He's looking right. He finds Beaner out in the flat here. He cuts back. He makes a miss. And then, unfortunately, uh, there's a missed block there, and then uh, Beaner was not able to get much further. They did get the ball up to the 35 yard line. So it will be a turnover on downs. Yes, turnover on downs for the Seahawks. So heck of a drive they were putting together there. Unfortunately, it came to a screeching halt as Cedar Crest now takes it over with 556 left in the game on the Seahawks 35 yard line leading 14 to nothing. And they take the snap, they hand it off to Frederick, right up the, trying to go right up the gut, then goes off the tackle. Trevor Beaner uh, brings them to a halt, and then a couple other Seahawks, Cameron Rice, and also, uh, I believe, Aiden Ufkus come in and get him. As Beaner's a little slow to get up, but uh, he's good to go. And now we see uh, Alex Carroll check out of the game for the Seahawks. That's another one of those sophomores doing a fine job. But it's tough playing varsity football as a sophomore. It's not something you really want to have to have your sophomores do uh, at the varsity level. But uh, um, 
when, when you have limited numbers as Seahawks do, that, that's kind of how it goes. So Cedar Crest now with the ball on 37, 528 and counting second down and eight. Seahawks are going to need to force another turnover or uh, uh, on downs or preferably uh, with a fumble recovery or interception or something. But they send Frederick right up the gut again. He gets to the 40-yard line. So that's going to make it third and five. And it's Frederick Reed, by the way. I keep calling him by his first name like anyone in Anacortes knows him. But uh, So now third down, 456 and counting. Very important for the Seahawks to get a stop here and force the fourth down and force Cedar Crest to make a decision as to whether or not they want to go for it or punt the ball. So let's see if the Seahawks can hold them and force a fourth down or force a turnover uh, would be even better. Let's see what happens here. They take the snap. Oh, we got a stoppage in play. Um, I don't know if there was a flag. Uh, might have been a timeout. Yes, timeout Cedar Crest. So with that timeout, we're going to take a quick 30 second break here on AHS Live. It's Cedar Crest 14, Anacortes 0. At the Senior College, we believe that learning should never stop. Anacortes Senior College offers lifelong learning opportunities to adults over 50 in a relaxed atmosphere. No test or homework. ASC is ran by volunteers, including retired college professors, scientists, artists, business and medical professionals. Fall, winter, and spring courses are held Tuesdays and Thursdays. For more information and registration forms, go to SeniorCollege.org. And we're back here on AHS Live. Seahawks Stadium, Anacortes, Washington. Matchup between the Cedar Crest Red Wolves and the Anacortes Seahawks. Cedar Crest leads 14-0. 434 left in the game and it is third and five for Cedar Crest at the at their own 40 yard line as they get ready to take the snap sends a man in motion he drops back he's looking to pass there's a lot of pressure and unfortunately he's able to escape and get away and Beaner eventually brings him down but it does result in a first down as they get down or get get up to their own 47 yard line. So it will be first and 10 Cedar Crest. And he was brought down inbounds near the sideline, but still inbounds. So the clock keeps moving at four. Well, it stops at 421 for him to reset the chains, but we'll start moving once they get everything set here. As the ref gives the signal to start the clock again. So Cedar Crest comes up. Surprised to not see them taking a little more time off the play clock. Looks like they might do that here as it's down to 13. They didn't let it get down too far, but they go to hand it off up the middle, and the runner is able to get up to the midfield line, which is going to make it uh, second and seven as we are now under four minutes left in the game. Seahawks have all three timeouts remaining if they choose to use them. Uh, but right now, uh, uh, the clock continues to run. Cedar Crest is down to two timeouts as they get back to the line of scrimmage. Here with 12 seconds left on the play clock, I imagine they're gonna let it run down a little bit and continue to run that game clock at the same time. Man in motion, they fake the handoff to the up back, get it to the man in motion on a pitch. And he is cutting left and cutting back upfield and gets down to about the 41 yard line of the Seahawks, which will uh, give Cedar Crest another first down. That appeared to be uh, number 26, Luke Amble, uh, on the run there uh, for the Red Wolves. Nice little bit of, uh, little piece of running there. As, uh, I'm sorry as uh, Gavin Long checks out of the game and Aiden Ufkus checks in. Aiden Ufkus being one of the uh, six Seahawk players with a cumulative GPA of 3.5 or higher, uh, which uh, definitely uh, is impressive with the amount of time that they have to spend at practices, traveling to games, game, even home games, and still be able to pull that off. That's the epitome of being a student athlete. So good job, Aiden. 
and the other Seahawks. I'll quickly name them off before the play. That's Stephen Downing, Brock Ilston, Cody Mole, Connor Cunningham, and Ante Petrish. As Cedarcrest steps back up to the line, 3.04 and counting left in the game. Second and 17. Letting the play clock run down a bit. Snap it at three seconds. They hand it off to the tailback. And that is Jaden Bates in on the tackle there for the Seahawks. Nice play by Jaden. And that will result in a no gain. So it will now be third down and seven, or excuse me, third down and 20. I got that right? Yeah, I guess there was a loss on the play. I apologize. Third down and 20 uh, for Cedar Crest here as the clock continues to run, 223 and counting. Play clock down to four, three, two. They get the snap off, looking to pass. Good pressure by the Seahawks. A lot of holding going on there at the offensive line. No call as Amble gets the ball and then reverses it backfield. Or not Amble, I apologize. That's number, uh, number 20, Tyler Gray. And is able to bust off quite the run after catch there. And he is able to get a first down. It's a 21-yard gain, and the ball will be spotted at the Seahawks' 42. So clock stops with 2.02 left till they get everything reset. And then it will continue to run after that. They've started the play clock, but not the game clock for some reason. Maybe they ruled him out of bounds. So anyways, uh, uh, Hayden Weaver checks in for the Seahawks here in place of Trevor Beaner. And Cedar Crest gets a snap off. All Seahawk players are able to get off the field. They get a pass out in the flat to Frederick Reed. And he is brought down by number 12, Caden Cummings, at the 34-yard line. So that will leave uh, one yard to go for Cedar Crest. It's going to make it uh, second and one. Minute 38 and counting here. And... Uh, Score 14 to nothing, Cedar Crest over your Anacortes Seahawks. As they make a bevy of changes here, and now, now they're not gonna make them. Quarterback rushes back out to the field as the play clock, they break the huddle with only five seconds left on the play clock. I'd be impressed if they even get the snap off. They will not, and that will be a delay of game on Cedar Crest with a minute 12 left. Oh, no, they did get the timeout called. I apologize. So, um, yeah, Cedar Crest gets the timeout call with a minute 12 left. We're going to take a quick 30-second break here on AHS Live. Behind every great Anacortes club and team, there's an unspoken hero. People that get us our team gear, organize our team dinners, and support us in everything else we need. From every student athlete in AHS, thank you, Saba, for the football team's two-a-day shirts, the volleyball team's warm-up gear, and everything else in between. Saba, the Seahawk Athletic Booster Association. And we're back on AHS Live. Dave Wilder here with you at Seahawk Stadium. One minute, 12 seconds left, 14 to nothing, Cedar Crest. They have the ball at the Seahawk 35-yard line. They get set up for the snap here. He drops back to pass, that's surprising. He gets it out to Frederick Reed in the flat. He stumbles back towards the center of the field and will be downed at the 30, 31 yard line right in there. Now under, that results in a first down for Cedar Crest. Clock is stopped with one minute left. Once they get everything reset, they'll get the clock restarted. And there's the signal from the referee. So now the clock continues to run under one minute left here. As Seahawk, or excuse me, Cedar Crest comes up to the line of scrimmage. And they get the snap off. And they hand it off. A double reverse here as it gets back up the middle to Tyler Gray. And they get gets them down to about the 25 yard line, which will be a six yard gain. So that will make it second and third. Four, 30 seconds left. Play clock is now running. There's about a three, two, three second difference between the play clock and the game clock. I'd be really surprised uh, if Cedar Crest even 
uh, ran a play here other than just kneeling down on the ball, which is what I would expect. It looks like they're in victory formation, and that's exactly what they do. So as the clock continues to run down five seconds, that will be the ball game, and Cedar Crest gets the win 14 to nothing. And with that, we're going to take a two-minute break here on AHS Live, and then we'll come back and do a quick post-game wrap-up right after that. Each year, thousands of fantastic pictures are taken by yearbook photographers of AHS sporting events, assemblies, performing arts, and more. The best of these photos are now available to you online. Just point your browser to ahs.smugmug.com. You can download digital images or order prints right from your computer or phone with the SmugMug app. How cool is that? Support the rhododendron and your students by using ahs.smugmug.com. Everybody loves a green lawn, but where does runoff from your lawn end up? Runoff from your lawn winds up in the stormwater system when we get heavy rains. From there, it runs untreated into the Salish Sea. Excess fertilizer can cause harmful algal blooms which use up the oxygen, causing oxygen-free dead zones. This has already become an issue in Hood Canal in the Southern Sailor Sea. Harmful algal blooms can make toxins that make lakes such as Campbell and Hart unsafe for pets and swimming. Weed killers can cause population declines and deformations in amphibians. Pesticides in lawn products can build up in the Salish Sea environment and kill beneficial insects. Don't be shellfish, keep the Salish Sea clean. And we're back here on AHS Live. Dave Wilder with you. As I uh, wrap up the post game here, you'll see some nice replays uh, from throughout the game. Thanks to the AHS Broadcast Club uh, being able to make all this happen. So um, some interesting information here is the uh, uh, game came to a close. Uh, Final score once again, Cedar Crest 14, Anacortes 0. Anacortes' defense tonight did not even give up 200 total yards, um, and that would be why they only gave up 14. They were only able to muster 125 offensively, but it's a work in progress. New coaching staff, a lot of new players and, uh, uh, to the varsity level, new offense. So it takes a while to get that stuff going. Uh, but they competed well with Cedar Crest tonight. Uh, with the loss, Anacortes does drop to 0-5 overall, 0-2 in their division within the conference. Cedar Crest moves to 3-2 and overall and 1-1 one and one in their division within the conference. So um, good effort by the Seahawks tonight and uh, uh, definitely saw some uh, uh, nice flashes on the offensive end. Just couldn't uh, fully sustain a whole drive uh, all the way down the field. But uh, good effort tonight and defensively. Anytime you hold a team under 200 yards at any level, uh, that, that's a pretty good day for the defense. So they should be proud of their effort there. And so uh, with that, um, I would like to say thank you to everybody that uh, watches and listens here to AHS Live. Thank you again to the crew, to my buddy and, and broadcast partner, Lou D'Amelio. I look forward to seeing you on the next broadcast and letting you do most of the talking. Uh, that broadcast will be October 19th is when the game is so it will be uploaded on October 20th so again thank you to everyone for listening and watching and go Hawks <laughs>